Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, I just wanted to record this for a few people that um, basically like me were perhaps struggling to find uh, a way of editing their photographs to make them look good uh, for free or cheaply uh, and quickly ideally. So I am the photographer for my local dive club and dive school uh, and so I typically take you know somewhere between 20 and 100 photographs per week uh, and so finding a way of doing this uh, was important to me. Initially raw therapy was the option purely because it was free uh, but since after playing with Lightroom and Photoshop I found that I actually get generally better results for the time invested using raw therapy. So this gives you an idea about what we're aiming for it's by no means like magazine quality but when they're uploaded to Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or something um, they you know they look really good uh, and they pop they're quite you know visually appealing uh, for those people that are viewing them. So when you are taking photographs with your GoPro, first of all, it's important that you have your settings dialed in. There are lots of good YouTube channels uh, that will talk you through the best settings for underwater photography with a GoPro. Uh, and But the bit that I want to kind of reinforce is making sure that you take your photographs in raw format. Uh, when you do that, uh, basically the file will have more information. Um, they won't look as good directly off the camera, but that's why we're editing them but it, you'll just have more flexibility. When you do that and you download the photographs from the camera, for which I'd advise just taking the memory card out and plugging it into your computer, it's a bit faster. Um, but I would advise, uh, sorry, when you do that, you'll end up with a .gpr file. .gpr files are GoPro's proprietary file type. Uh, and so some photo editing suites will not recognize that file. So what we're going to do is going to download Adobe Digital Negative Converter or just search Google for DNG Converter and download that app. Uh, it's really quite simple. You don't need to go through and you know change all of these options. All you need to do is click select for, uh, file for the images to be converted. Uh, and in this case, I've popped them in here, which is test folder. Okay, uh, and then select an output. You know, where do you want you put to put your converted folder? Now, I always set a new folder called converted just so I can make sure that I keep those files separate and I don't accidentally edit the wrong ones. Um, because when you download them off the camera, there will also be one that you can edit directly. So what we'll end up with then is I've made a couple of copies of this for reasons you'll see in a minute. Uh, we can then go into raw therapy. Now, when you go into raw therapy, uh, the bit that you're looking for is the file explorer on the left hand side over here. Sometimes it will be kind of hidden away. Just click on the little file icon and it will pop out. Uh, and then we find the converted photographs and double click on the photograph to bring it up. And there we go. We can see that that original image uh, is quite washed out, low detail, it's a bit blurry. Uh, and most importantly, there is this horrible green cast. Now, the instructions that I'm going to give will apply for open water, uh, more or less the same as they will for uh, shots taken in the pool like this. Um, so it's just a matter of changing some of the settings up or down a little bit, as you'll see. So let's get to work on this one. The There are four main tabs along the top that we're going to be working with. So don't get too confused. There's a lot of information here. But to be honest, you'll only really be playing with about six or seven of these settings uh, and just increasing and decreasing them to you know what sees fit for you. So the tabs that we're going to be looking at firstly is exposure, detail, color, don't worry about advanced, and transform. The other ones you can certainly have a go through and have a play through like in the raw tab, but it's mainly these kind of four. So exposure, detail, color, and transform. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the color tabs, this third one here, it looks like a little kind of rose wheel here, uh, and we are going to correct the color. When you are taking photographs with your GoPro, it's a good idea to have a look at the surroundings and find things that you know to be like as bright white as possible. Now I know that um, the tank on this instructor just here was pretty damn white. And there we go, we're, we're, that's much better already. Um, what I actually do normally is I will take uh, selfies um, of myself, obviously, um, because I actually have a bright white, a pure white spot on my regulator right in the middle. So where this girl's mouth is just here, um, there's a white bit on my regulator that I can color correct from. OK, but if we just find things that are white, we can just click on this pick here and then pick something that is about 
about right. Okay, and we can see that's much better already. To be honest, um, that is enough to actually make it a usable photograph, but we're going to go a little bit further just to kind of bring out some of the detail and tidy it up a little bit. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to click into this detail tab here and we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to click any of these options that have a little circle. You can click on it and it will turn it on. Now we can see that that's made this way too dark, but haze removal, if we bring the strength down a little bit, we can see that there's quite a lot of haze where the water's coming through the light uh, and mixing with you know bits of dust and stuff uh, and it just kind of enriches that. Unfortunately, it will also make the photograph a bit darker. This is probably the main setting that you'll need to play about with after we've done this. Okay, so we've got haze removal done. Uh, and then we're going to come across into exposure. And we're going to click on auto levels. Now, if you've never done photo editing software before, this little area up here, this histogram, is your friend. Basically, what it's trying to show you is... Anything that's over on the left is very, very dark. Anything that's over on the right is very, very bright. Uh, and so obviously we don't want all of the information crammed at the end like this or up here, because if it's up here, it's being blown out and it'll be these bright whites and you won't see any detail. And if it's down here, it'll be too dark and you won't be able to pick any details out like eyes, for example. So we want as much of the information in the middle as possible, uh, but don't worry too much about it. But if we click auto levels, you'll see that that is way too bright um, it's just way way too bright and it's pushed all of the, we, we've pushed the information off of the left hand side here so we haven't got anything that's too dark anymore we don't have any highlights that are actually blown out but we need to nudge this down a little bit so we could play about with these individual options in here but I prefer to go down to shadows and highlights we're going to turn this on just by clicking it there again uh, and we're going to kind of drop the highlights down a little bit and you can see we've pulled away from this uh, right hand side of the histogram okay so we're going to pull that down a little bit just to get rid of it because ultimately in this case the, the bright lights were things that we don't want to be looking at and of course lighter things tend to attract your attention so we don't want everybody looking at the lights we want people looking at the divers so we can also pull the tonal width down a little bit and that basically puts the focus on the now is the tonal width down to the brightest of the lights. The next bit we'll look at is shadows. And of course we can see again that we've got divers faces just here and lots of details on kind of protective gear that we want to get a little bit of detail from. The problem is, is that when we do this, if we you know go extreme, it makes all of this noise that we get from the sensor uh, just way more obvious. We'll try and tackle that in a little bit um, with a free method and also with a paid for method but we want the detail just not too much noise so let's bring that down just a little bit let's have a look at a before and after to be honest i think it looked better before <laughs> uh, but that's again some of the, the, the noise and stuff but we'll see in a second if we can do something with it uh, the next bit we're going to turn on oh hang on a minute that's why it's just there we go i just had shadows way too high Okay, so the next bit that we're going to add is a vignette filter. Now, vignette filters, if you're unsure, are the dark bits around the edges of a photograph that you know some traditional lenses will accidentally apply. But it's also something that's quite desirable because it pulls focus towards the middle. I usually turn it on because in most of my photographs, the, the bit that I want people to look at is in the middle, not in the corners. Um, but we'll just turn it on for the moment. I tend to find about 0.4 works for me. But, you know, we can we can make it much more extreme uh, and really pull focus, but then it looks very artificial. Um, so about 0 point, kind of 0.4 to 0 0.6 somewhere. That, that's good. Um, the next bit that we're going to turn on is lab adjustments. Uh, I'm just going to boost the contrast a little bit and also the chromacity, which will just boost those colors that we lose from being underwater. And that looks a little bit better already. Okay, so the next bit that we're going to look at, we're going to go back into the detail tab. Now, if you want, if you don't want to have to pay for a piece of software to do it for you, we can remove some of this noise. If we zoom in, we can click on, we can remove impulse noise, and we can see that those, the little white specks, uh, most of them will disappear, uh, and also 
noise reduction. That'll get rid of a lot of that kind of you know horrible color that you get from it. Uh, just note that it won't apply that to the whole image. It'll only like it's only when you zoom into 100% that you'll notice the difference until uh, you actually save the photograph. So this will actually look better once it's been saved. Okay, so we have color corrected. We've adjusted some of the lighting. We have put a vignette on. We've re reduced some of the noise. Uh, and there's a couple more things that we're going to look at, and that is going to turn on vibrance, and we're going to boost the pastel colors because again, the colors get washed out from being underwater, and you know these very very bright pink uh, fins and this electric yellow kind of octopus line um, gets washed out. So if we just turn on vibrance and boost that a little bit, it also makes the water look this you know that deep azure. Uh, and then also in the pool that we take photographs in. Um, this hideous kind of almost sodium lighting where it's, you know, that very, very orange, like, you know, old fashioned street lights. Uh, and so it tends to give that a very yellow, orange, almost red cast to everything. So what we can do is we can come into channel mixer uh, and we can turn down. Oh, hang on a minute. We didn't turn on soft light. There we go. Yeah, that's why. Let's turn on soft light. I'll explain that in a moment. Um, we can adjust this. So normally what I'd have to do is I'd actually have to turn down the red just a little bit. But you can see that what that does is it makes the skin tones just a little bit green so be careful with that that's a bit too much hmm. let's just reset that to be honest it's not this isn't the best example photograph for it But yeah, basically we normally have to play about, about with this or uh, play about with the color temperature. We can literally make the image uh, a lot colder or a lot warmer uh, and that will adjust it. So let's just turn that. Just bring that down. Anytime, by the way, that you adjust, um, we're using the pick, that will adjust the temperature automatically. So just be aware of that. Okay. Uh, and I think we're done. So before we go into transform adjustments, which is to kind of crop the image uh, and adjust the uh, kind of rotation. So you know, make it, you know, just in the rotation like this. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come up here and I'm going to right click on the image and I'm going to click processing, uh, processing file operations and I'm going to copy that. Before I make any adjustments that are specific to this photograph, this is just my baseline. This is by no means done. Um, I'm going to go through and individually, you know, make some adjustments, but that is a baseline. So I can apply this to other photographs by going right click on the next photograph, go processing file operations and paste. Uh, and it will make the same adjustments to the photograph. Now, obviously, it is literally the same photograph, so we're not going to see. Um, but that usually is enough. If you're taking the same kinds of photographs in the same kind of lighting, the same conditions, um, you'll find that most of the same settings will apply. Uh, and so you can reuse them for most photographs, which is what speeds it up for me. So once we've done that, we've got a copy of the profile operations. Uh, we can then go through and make transform adjustments. So we can you know, select the bit of the photograph that we want. So maybe we just want these, or perhaps we want to look at rule of thirds. So we can you know, get the main things that we want kind of along the third lines. So something like that. Get a jaunty angle. Uh, and then of course we can make rotations down here. So we can adjust, the, uh, rotate to the left, rotate to the right, or we can just select a straight line and kind of fix to that uh, and do that. Uh, obviously, that's not the kind of photograph, uh, the way that I'd want the photograph to be, but gives you an idea. Okay, so once you've done that, then all you need to do is you need to click Save. And again, what I prefer to do is so make a new folder and just do Edited. And so we can then save into there and then go into the next photograph and so on. Uh, I hope that's been useful. Um, basically, once I've done that, um, we'll then go through and then individually adjust all of those settings. So, for example, it might be that we want a little bit more, a little bit less haze removal. Perhaps we need to you know, bump the shadows a little bit more. But go through. Those are the basic settings that I use. 
uh, and then from there you can just kind of go through and just learn what each of the settings do does. There's one more kind of piece of advice that I wanted to give uh, and that is uh, for two pieces of software, they do cost money, I think it's about £70, but that is uh, Topaz Labs. Just go through and have a look uh, at what these are. Um, but basically, they're really, really smart bits of software. Uh, in fact, actually, let's do Sharpen. So Topaz Sharpen, basically, we can go through and find those same images. Uh, test folder, converted, oh, no, sorry, edited. Let's do this so we can have a before and after. Uh, open up the file and basically what it will do is it will scan the image and it will use kind of a little bit of AI to work out the best things to tweak about it in order to you know improve the sharpness and remove noise. Both sharpen and denoise will do both things. It's just that Sharpen is obviously better at sharpening and Denoise is obviously better at denoising. Um, they are separate pieces of software, but you can buy them as a package. Um, so it doesn't look great there, but you'll see once it processes. We can go through and basically just select different options and then click Save, Change. Uh, let's save to Test Folder, Edited, Save into there. It takes about kind of 10 seconds 15 seconds maybe per photograph to process but it's absolutely worth it hopefully you'll be able to see the difference one second take your time there we go so let's open up both of those photographs there we've got sharp Uh, okay, it doesn't seem to have made much difference on that one. <laughs> okay, but what you can see, if we look at the detailing, just makes the edges of the detailing, usually the bit that I find that it improves the most is around people's gear and around masks and around eyes. Um, but just trust me, normally Topaz makes a really big difference to it. So uh, I hope that's been useful. Um, if you've got any questions, please do ask in the comments and I'll do what I can to help. Goodbye.